my name is Nanny Pod Lesney, and I teach people how to kiss keto, keep it super simple, and lose the weight, fix your relationship with food, and really just get over your own BS in your mind <laughs> that tells you that you can't be successful. So that's who I am. Um, drop a live in the comments below. If you are live, if you are on the replay, drop replay in the comments below. So I have keto waffles here. Uh, they're super delicious. So if you would like the recipe, drop recipe in the comments below. The more people that come on, I will share. Um, but this is pretty bomb.com. I'm literally eating it while I'm talking to you. So please don't think I'm rude. Uh, yeah. So I have a couple people in my inbox and I have a, a lot of people who, you know, really get frustrated with their weight loss journey. And they think that this weight loss journey thing has to be this radical, crazy thing that they start like on a Monday. And if you sound relatable, just drop relatable in the comments below. Because we all promise ourselves, I'm going to do X, Y, Z. And here's my keto waffles for anybody that's popping on. We promise ourselves we're going to go to the gym. We promise ourselves things are going to change. We promise ourselves it's going to start on Monday. We promise ourselves we're going to quit drinking so much. We're promising ourselves we're going to eat better. We're promising ourselves, promising ourselves, and promising ourselves all of this stuff. First and foremost, you're promising things that you're not, you're promising yourself things that you're probably not going to be able to keep. Like those promises are, you're not going to be able to keep them. Because when's the last time you went to the gym? When's the last time you ate a full diet for longer than a couple minutes? When's the last time that you actually did those things for one? So that's my first point. Stop promising yourself that you're going to do X, Y, Z and just start making intentional decisions. So that's the number one thing. Like We keep just saying this over and over again. Like we're going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And going to, going to, going to, shoulda, shoulda, shoulda. And you should all over yourself, right? I say this a lot. So like that's like key into my teaching. There's that. So understand that that is number one. And that is like the first and foremost, you have to stop shooting all over yourself. And the next thing is to really get the results that you want to really drop the weight and keep it off, you have to do this thing. And it's this one thing, and if you're excited to have the thing, drop me some thumbs up in the comments below. And then also I have some keto waffles here for whoever keeps coming on. Um, if you really wanna lose the weight and you really want the secret to success, like point blank period, the good morning, Donna, I've not spoken to you in a really long time. Um, the secret to losing weight and the secret to having success, the secret to keeping it off, the secret to all of it is honestly doing the thing every single day that you don't want to do. <laughs> I know it sounds freaking like super simple, right? Um, we promise ourselves all of these things and then we don't want to do the promises that we set out. So it's a twofold double whammy already working against yourself. So at what point... Are you going to start doing the things that you know you're supposed to be doing? Hi, Jamie. At what point are you really ready to make changes, right? We can say, I need help. We can say, I need this, I need that, or I need a plan, I need this, I need that. No, it's nothing to do with that. Like, I am a great coach because I show people, one, it's realistic, two, I do, like, I lead by example, and three, it's not about a plan. It's all between here. The plan is between here. If you think that you're looking, if you're looking for the secret sauce, and this is relatable across the board for so many things, it's not just about weight loss, because I do this in my own business and I do this with things myself, right? So I'm not saying that it's easy, I'm saying it's simple. You have to do the things that you don't want to do. This morning, like full on transparency, I didn't sleep very well. I was up a little bit later than I would have liked last night. Um, I tossed and turned a lot. I'm on my period and I just genuinely wanted to not get up this morning. I didn't. I was laying in bed until like I said I was going to go to the 630 class. 630 came and went. Then 8 o'clock happened. 
Well, around seven, I was like still sleeping kind of, and I always usually wake up pretty early, but I didn't want to go to the gym. I don't like really going to the gym. On the way to the gym, I was talking myself out of how I can get off the exit and go back home. So when I tell you that like I, yes, I lead by example, and yes, I, you know, get results for myself and my clients, it's because we're doing the things we don't want to do, but we're saying what, what I'm saying is like, it's an intentional struggle. Well, it's not a, it's intentional actions against the struggle. Um, I don't like counting macros. I don't like putting shit in my app. I don't like, um, any of that, but for where I'm at and like, I'm all trying to willy nilly, like get these abs, which I think over time I will be able to get there without tracking but I wanna get there faster. So how do I get there faster? Doing the shit that I don't wanna do. I don't wanna count. I don't wanna put these amazing waffles into a stupid carb counter and have it like give me the results, right? I don't wanna do that, I don't have to remember. I just wanna enjoy my food. But here's the thing. If you continue to say that you want a goal and an outcome and you're not getting to the goal and the outcome, you can't blame your lack of effort you can't blame the diet. You have to blame your, you have to blame your effort. So I'm hoping I'm making sense. And I hope you guys are understanding that like we have to do the things that we don't want to do. So going to the gym today was a super hard struggle. I'm ultimately super tired right now too. I'm drinking keto coffee and just trying to get myself woken back up. But it's just, I have to go do things that I don't want to do. And if you are struggling you can't blame, shame, and justify your way out of it. We want to blame our partner. We want to blame our husband. We want to blame our kids. We want to blame our stress. We want to blame a pandemic. We want to blame this and we want to blame that. But it's it starts with you and it starts in here. And you have to win the war here before you can win the war on your body. And I don't like to use those kind of phrases because it's very masculine and very like pushed back. Like we can relax and allow and like have things happen. But you have to be intentional. You have to do the efforts. You have to make, you have to make the effort. And if you're not making the effort, you can't blame the keto diet, right? Or if you're making, what also i see a lot is people are making these efforts, right? And then they do it for two weeks and then they're pissed off that the efforts are not showing what the results. We have this instant gratification mindset because Amazon delivers in two days normally. Um, you know, Sue, Sarah, Sally, and Sue from the office lost weight in one minute on keto. So then you're pissed off and blaming Sarah, Sally, and Sue, but you didn't stay on it long enough for your actual body to work. Like I see so many people in all of the keto message boards and everything. Keto doesn't work. It's three weeks and I have it. No, I haven't seen results. Well, yeah, no shit. You didn't see results because one, you probably didn't do it to the full on best ability Two, I see a lot of people are like who lost weight on keto or who it doesn't matter what diet anyway let's who I lost weight on keto or who lost weight on keto without exercising because we have this mentality that exercising is just for weight loss but it's not just about that the cognitive benefits for exercise the de-stress benefits of exercise the cellular detoxification that happens the like so many, th the muscle building, like do you know why people are in nursing homes and break their hip and then die? It's because they don't have protein in their bodies. <laughs> and if you're not eating protein and if you're not building your muscle mass for the end of life, not just right here, then you're gonna fall and die and break your hip in the nursing home. Or you're gonna break your hip, fall and fall. Y'all know what I meant. So we can't just sit here and say like, take shortcuts or like whatever. We know how to eat. We know how, like all the diet plans in the world again are, not, are all great. They're all great. They all work. The problem is we have ADD and instant gratification thought processes where we're like, oh, this didn't work. I did it for three weeks. Well, if you're doing it correctly, you're balanced, your formulation of your diet is there and it's appropriate and you're fueling your body appropriately, and you're moving your body, and you're getting good sleep, and you're hydrating, and you're doing the shit that you don't wanna do, AKA eating a clean, good diet, fueling your body appropriately, you're gonna see results, but you're not gonna see results in two days. You're not gonna see results in three weeks. 
We have to stop with this mentality of, all right, I'm driving the car, I'm driving the car. Well, I'm gonna drive it this way. Well, where is it gonna take me? Okay, I'm gonna loop on over here. Where is it gonna take me now? And you're driving in freaking circles. Drive straight, stay in your lane. Don't worry about what's going on the right or the left of you and you'll get the results. But you have to continue to drive the car and driving the car is not easy every day. When you drive the car and you fuel the car appropriately, you will see results. But you can't drive and swerve and blah, blah, blah. I'm doing keto today. I'm going to do the grapefruit diet today. I'm going to do this today. No, man. Eat real food. Move your body. Drink water. Stop eating chemical crap poison. Stop consuming chemically crappy poison on the internet, <laughs> aka our Facebook news feeds as of lately, um, and the news and everything. Practice some self-care, set up some boundaries, pet your doggies, and have a freaking blast in your life. But you can't just continue to pop in my inbox or pop in the Facebook groups or pop in wherever and say, Blame, blame everybody else, shame yourself, and then justify why you can't. Enough of that. Let's not, right? So on that note, my sermon is over for today. I hope you guys have an epic day. So getting back to my keto waffle recipe that's probably now cold, but whatever, it's not a big deal. Um, I'm going to give you the super tip. Are you guys ready? Give me some hearts if you guys are ready. The um, keto waffle recipe is going to be very wild. You're going to be super shocked. Are you guys ready for the keto recipe? Okay, literally take these waffles out of the, out of, out of the box and put them in the air fryer. That's all I did. Um, no, but ultimately these aren't that bad. Um, they're eggs. There's, I don't really like the sunflower oil really. There's some other flowers in here I can't really even pronounce. I'm not really a big fan of all of this, like 100% all of the time. Like we shouldn't be eating keto waffles every single freaking day. But like, I'm a, I'm a little hormonal. I wanted sweets really bad. So this is a really good alternative to the normal chemically crappy waffles that we make. Um, they don't really taste that good. So ultimately, <laughs> um, but what I did was, so I have heavy whipping cream here. This is what that is. Um, I actually just put it in the blender with the like, two things of monk fruit packets and made the heavy whipping cream. And then I just made some berries, put some berries on top. It's not awful, but it's not the best. I need some sugar-free syrup, but I haven't found any sugar-free syrup that is not made with like maltodextrin and sucralose and aspartame. So if you know of any, let me know. I think their chalk syrup is actually not, it's C-H-O-C brand. I'll have to look into it. But um, I ultimately, um, yeah, I just made this and then I have prosciutto here for extra protein. Um, but I like birch benders a lot actually. Like you have to just really doctor it up. I used actually the pancake mix as well, somebody just commented. Um, it's not bad, it's just not the best, but like I think as a healthy alternative, I would full on support this. Um, I usually, the reason why I bought them is because Saturdays I do like, I like to go either go to brunch or um, I either go to brunch or I just make brunch here. And I like, I'm a huge advocate for just doing whatever works for you. So like sometimes I'll eat avocado toast, sometimes I will get actual waffles, but Right now, I'm pretty aggressive about my weight loss goals, so I'm really trying to intentionally make better choices, regulate my insulin, keep my inflammatory issues down, um, and really just control what I can control, because sometimes I just can't, and especially right now, like just this time of the month is just not the best. Um, so it just is what it is, and you just do the best you can with what you can, but I'm making intentional choices. I'm not going and blowing the whole day, right? Like tonight, we're gonna go to sushi, I don't think we're gonna do it, but like I would have some rice, but like ultimately right now, I'm just tired of not having abs, so I'm tracking, I'm controlling what I'm eating and really being aggressive about my diets even though I don't really feel like it and this is probably not the best week to like level up um, and be really aggressive, but I think if anything, it's a good challenge 
working against your hormones, working against those natural sugar cravings, working against those things that happen when we're having hormone issues and time of the month issues. So I think that like just being intentional and being an example for you is going to yield way more results. I don't want to do it, but guess what? I got to master this mind, right? Um, yeah, and I don't suggest tracking. So Terry's asking, do I use an app to track? Yeah, for sure. So I use Carb Manager. Um, my I use ketogenic.com carb ketogenic.com to find out my macros because that's who I'm getting certified with. So that's the only real place that I trust. Um, but I'm not an advocate for tracking. I'm really not. The only reason why I'm tracking is because I have about seven pounds to lose yet. Um, but it's not just about the pounds, it's about the fat um, and converting my fat in my body to muscle because I'm so atrophied still. Like, yeah, I have some guns now, we're working on them, but my legs are very atrophied. Um, my, it's going to take me way longer to get the abs that I thought that I had that were covered by body fat because I'm atrophied from, 10 years of not using my body, 10 years, and then three surgeries, or five surgeries in two years, and then finally, I'm only on this fitness journey for the last two. That being said, the last two, I'd say one aggressive year I've been on this weight loss, fat loss journey, um, and muscle building, so like my protein has to be way high, completely different than most people I coach. Um, people that have significant body fat to lose, significant, mindset challenges to work on, significant um, lifestyle changes that they need to make, I don't recommend counting because that's just an additional layer. If you're more intentional about counting, instead of making good choices, making good choices and counting are, yeah, that's the key to kind of success. But like if you're not making the good choices and you don't know if an avocado is a keto food or you don't know what kind of diet plan and step by step you're doing consistently, adding that tracking layer is not going to yield you the results. I think tracking has its place at some point. But if you're just starting out, you're super overwhelmed, you can't stick to it for more than three days, you really need to evaluate the choices and the decisions and the routine that you're executing versus counting and tracking and whatever. So on that note, I'm out. I'm going to eat my okay waffles here. Um, I think that this would be a lot better, ultimately, the pancake mix and these waffles if they would use See, they don't even use any stevia or erythritol. If they made these with like stevia and erythritol or they like flavored their actual pancake powder with like good stuff, I think it would taste way better, but there's not even, this isn't even flavored. So that's why I use the heavy whipping cream. Kind of disappointing, but it's better than eating a whole full on waffle, uh, shitty crappy one. So, all right, I love you guys. I gotta go. P.S. Couch is coming today. Woo woo. <laughs> after 10 some freaking weeks all right guys have a good day i will talk to you soon bye